Hello, unlucky viewer. You're watching Danuki TV, and it is a very special day today because it's the week anniversary of my channel. Uh, I will be publishing it, but first I want to get out of the way that Red Orchestra 2 is being released mid-September. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I know uh, quite a lot of the community seems to be looking forward to, it, uh, forward to it. A lot of talk about that. Now, let's get back to this fun day Monday. <laughs> I do want to say that I did a, a, a different fun day Monday to this, but unfortunately there were a lot of randoms um, who didn't make the game very enjoyable. Uh, even though all they had to do is play normally, uh, and you'll notice now what is happening in this fun day Monday. You can see enemy troops, Anuki, you haven't have you, you've turned the fog of war off. And it is day of victory, we are playing on the map Railway Station. It is a 3v3, although the map is, well it can go up to 5v5. Uh, Laubox already rushing his infantry into the middle and taking cover behind this wall. Screaming Eagle noticing the lack of cover, he's using these wooden pallets, but now have a Panzer free from Migsy. But of course the USA forces are going to be onto that straight away, but they have a Stuart tank. Stuart, uh, going to be a bit outmatched by the Panzer free. Going to have to be very, very careful indeed. You can see infantry firing all the way into the center. Perpro has the left hand side where the railway station is that offers a lot of cover uh, if they can control it a few more guys in there popping out the windows would get some good side shots into the infantry uh, the way day of victory mode works is you need troops of higher value you know more expensive troops uh, or just more troops in general uh, if you have more of that than your opponent in the center you begin capping it and as soon as it goes to 100 percent bam you win uh, this panzer free just holding up in center, he notices there's nothing the American forces can do about that right now. So he's pretty much safe. There's absolutely no way you can sneak in this map. Unless you use the natural cover and your opponent is just not looking. And you can see <laughs> the Stuart tank takes out those two guys. Uh, I was about to say, if you can see the ring, it's quite big. A lot of places infantry can hide and get in, but remember... Both sides can see each other's stuff completely. There's absolutely no hiding. This Stuart tank realizes it's going to be kind of safe on this side, gunning down the infantry behind these buildings. Sephiroth the Mighty doing a very good job of keeping that out of the way of the Panzer free. <laughs> we have a car going to be driving straight down here and gunning all the infantry in the windows. I'm not sure Perpro has noticed this threat. Uh, all these free troops die. Could have used some more in there, but I guess it's. Uh, too much blobbing is a really bad thing. Uh, Stuart Tank, a little out of position, gets hit by the Panzer III and destroyed. The flag point now being captured by the Germans. Uh, Americans really need to get some more troops in there. But I guess it would be a waste until they take care of that Panzer III. That Panzer III is currently not going to be challenged on the field. There's nothing here. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Hiding behind some food crates, which are... Strangely enough, absorbing all that force of the Panzer Free's HE round. And there's some dudes up there, I don't know why. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it completely baffles me. Uh, we have Eagle using this broken wall as cover. It does look like they've got some anti-tank to field. A Greyhound, uh, it could do okay against the Panzer Free. <clears throat> Let's have an AT gun from Screaming Eagle. But uh, that Greyhound, if it gets hit, is certainly going to die. Uh, using the buildings as cover, using its speed to its advantage and maneuverability. That's the only way this Greyhound is going to win. Screaming Eagle, hopefully on the ball with that, is sees an infantryman right behind that wall. Uh, I don't think he could throw an AT grenade. He does have a rifle, which usually means they don't have that sort of equipment. But remember, you can pick up equipment on the field from enemy soldiers or your own. <laughs> this Panzer Free and M8 Greyhound. They're having their own little one-on-one -on, -one on the battlefield. You can see direct control being used for both of them. Migsy and Eagle, who will win this battle? You can see Eagle using this gap in the building and he destroys <laughs> destroys the Panzer Free with one shot. Uh, Eagle winning this battle. Whew. Now that they have sort of gained control of uh, the armor advantage on the field, although there is a Panzer IV coming up. 
Screaming Eagle has now progressed onto the next level. Will he be able to take care of the Pack 40 and Panzer IV? Um, gonna require a lot of direct control, APM, micromanagement day. But we have more infantry approaching in the center, using that wall as cover. Laubox doing a good job of keeping infantrymen in there. And uh, <laughs> the M8 firing on that car uh, actually hits it through the window. What a nice shot that was. You you heard it first. Come here, all of you. Aim it is in the reach zone. I'm not sure what kind of motivational speeches these are. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, the American forces are saying them. And they are currently decapping the central point. Emmett Greyhound gets hit by the same gap in the building. Which he used to destroy the Panzer III. Migsy taking advantage of that this time. The American forces are now capping the victory point. Uh, Purpro with one guy straight in the center, just healing up. Uh, he could at least get into cover if he's going to do that. Uh, we do have this AT gun, which will be replacing the anti-tank capabilities of the Greyhound. Already firing at. This thing is the only thing stopping that Panzer IV currently. Unless there are hidden infantry, which could throw an AT grenade. But I don't think Migs is going to fall for that. One guy recruits this AT gun and begins firing. First shot misses, though. Purpro reloading and takes a shot but dies, <laughs> but still kills the Panzer IV. We have a double kill. Something I've not seen throughout my entire three months of playing this game. Okay, yeah, I, I suppose that's reasonable. Uh, we have smokes going up. Remember, smokes still offer a small benefit in this game as they reduce the accuracy of incoming fire or outgoing fire. Uh, very few things not affected by smoke, such as flamethrowers. Uh, we have a grenade going off in the center. That guy ducks for cover, but that's not going to work. Uh, we also have a few infantry rangers on the right, but uh, Mrs. Lemming keeping this area locked down. Notice how important it is. Even with the fog of war off, you need to keep areas locked down to prevent units from flanking and gaining that advantage. And a whirlwind now comes in, and a mirror matchup we're going to have as Seth brings an AA tank. Whoa, uh, mouse screwed up there. Uh, we still have this anti-tank gun in the middle. Covering the center, because that's the only place you need to cover. Uh, especially if you know where the enemy tanks are, and there's a guy flying in the back. Uh, more troops moving in from both sides. There's an extreme lack of cover in the center, and the points are now ticking down for the American forces. Uh, which means the Germans have more high-profile troops in there, and per pro... Trying to gun down one guy, he throws a grenade off, takes cover, and I think he's going to get away with it. That guy jumps out of the way, funnily enough, survives, kind of close to that grenade, but didn't do enough, and the whirlwind gets hit by the M19. M19 wins this battle, and you can see how destroyed that whirlwind gets. And just look at the visual effects on it, as the <laughs> it looks completely battered, and it slowly progresses into a destroyed state, not just an instant switch. Uh, Got to be aware of this Pack 40 in the back. Uh, we have some tank here on my map. I can't seem to find it. Uh, no, it's the AT gun. Okay. <clears throat> the map is a little confusing. Uh, I'm not sure who smokes these are, by the way. But uh, that works both ways. It seems like we have a grenade going off on that building. Takes care of those guys. Uh, I'm just going to assume that was Laubox doing that. Seth the Mighty reversing his M19. Uh, trying to get away from an approaching heads attack which is destroying the scenery in the background and here it comes uh, Migsy also with a Panzer IV already tracked damage for Mrs. Lemming's Hetzer tank not good news but the engine also gets damaged for this M19 and that's in plain sight of that Hetzer it could destroy it or the Panzer IV is also coming in for the kill Migsy's gonna go for the kill steal and this building's offering a little bit of protection uh, the only thing currently keeping this M19 alive. It takes one shot. Surprisingly, though, uh, this M19 is just so dead, but <laughs> it's going to fire and kill whatever it can behind. Even going to try and get rid of that Panzer IV. Uh, the AT gun moves up on this right-hand side. Going to take some few shots. Uh, we've got a bunch of infantry from Laubox moving in. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful to be able to see everything on the field. A lot of smokes in the center and a hell of a lot of infantry moving in. From Laubox and Migsy, supported by the Panzer IV. This is one hell of a push. Purpro rushing to man this AT gun now. Urgently needing its fire support to take out the Panzer IV and Hetzer. 
gets hit. It is destroyed. Not usable. Bad news for the American forces. This push from the German is just so in synergy. This is such a great push. They've annihilated the only thing which can take care of this armor. Which means they can advance and support their infantry with the tank. Screaming Eagle with a Sherman tank. Sherman can definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Panzer IV. Uh, both of them kind of susceptible to each other's fire. Uh, so it's pretty much who has the better control or the more of an advantage of a side shot. Alternatively, you can just use luck. Luck always works when you have luck. And we've got a mortar from Laubox as well as a machine gun from Laubox. Going very heavy on support and straight away as soon as he sets that up, Migsy moves in and takes cover behind this wall. That was one hell of a good timing. As soon as that machine gun was up, he moves straight away. And these guys... You may be thinking they're a little bit too blobbed up, but remember, there's no artillery for the American forces at the moment, so they are absolutely, you know, safe to do this. Uh, if at some point a mortar does come out or artillery, then yeah, they are in danger, but for now, they are safe, they are fine, and because of the fog of war is turned off, allowing me, but also everyone else, to see everything. I'm sorry, that's just the way it has to be. Put in observers, replay system, damn you. Anyway, coming back to the game, we have a 2-2-2 two, 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 just crashing into this uh, this little structure. 80 grenade goes off, Screaming Eagle, I think. Yeah, Screaming Eagle gets the 80 grenade off. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure why that 2-2 two, two was surprised at that. Uh, I guess it wanted to gun those infantry guys behind that building down, but had to reload or something. Oh, such a horrible thing when you're like, yeah, I'm going to charge in there, and all of a sudden you have to reload, and you're like, no, why do I have to reload now? Uh, M10 Wolverine on the field going head to head with the Panzer IV and Hetzer and they're backing away, they don't want any part of that. Um, tank destroyers usually have pretty good range, um, but if they get hit by anything they're just dead. Or maybe they're reversing away from this jumbo, I think that's more likely, M10 not really a threat, head to head combat. Uh, but you know, better safe than sorry, this jumbo using the railway station as a little bit of cover. Uh, Getting rid of the troops first, it doesn't seem like the German armor wants to go head on with that. Although the Panzer IV is now moving up. The victory point is dangerously close to being uh, in control of the Germans. 84, 85 uh, ticking up. This Panzer IV really out of position. That Jumbo tank is going to annihilate it. Jumbo is a very good tank to have. Crew injured, stunning that. Also, we've got a half track supporting. Taking out the infantry on the side. It's been decrewed though. No worries though, the Jumbo tank's going to be on the field. we got 91% for this victory point. 92. It's getting dangerously close. The Americans need to push with whatever they have and eliminate any infantry on the field. You can see the Germans have set up sandbags. Uh, sandbags could have been seen a little earlier on in the game. That would have definitely helped out both sides. And there we have it. Laubach screaming, no! The points are now ticking down. Sorry Team Germany, but you're not going to get an easy win today. That's exactly what I want to see though. I want to see a good long fight. Uh, if possible, Seth the Mighty using his Jumpo very aggressively now. Clearing out the remaining infantry. Being fired upon still from the Hetzer tank, which has been repaired. Uh, we have smokes as well on the German side. Using that. A little bit of extra cover. Free cover, I suppose. You see the points are ticking down very slowly. Second... Jumbo tank, this time controlled by Per Pro. They're moving up in unison. Oh, and there's a wonderful veteran sniper on this side. Pack 40. This side seems pretty much covered by Mrs. Lemming. Uh, it would be nice if they could clear that out. Migsy with a Nash horn. Firing long range on these jumbos. These jumbos now backing away. One track damage for Seth the Mighty's tank. Per Pro also takes a shot to the front. It returns fire on the Hetzer tank, though. More infantry moving up for the American forces, taking cover behind 